what it is, what's up, got your podcast in the cut, uh, episode two, which is always a little bit less um, fantastic than episode one, I suppose, but I'm going to try to make it a good time for you guys. One thing I'm going to try to do with this one is get a little bit more concise. I thought I did a pretty good job of going in depth on some of the topics I picked last week, which were pretty much only two uh, topics, but I'm going to be a little bit more, um, how should we say, tight butthole on uh, on these topics. Now, I don't really mention the topics that we cover in the beginning because it's very flexible. Um, if I'm being a little bit more drawn out, I don't want to like pull in a topic that you know would just kind of pad out the time. So I got at least two good ones that I'm going to throw in here. From there, we'll kind of see where it goes from there. But um, I hope you guys enjoyed the first one. I'm going to link that to this episode. But a lot of good entertainment recently. I think people need to understand, dude. When it comes to like the fall, like kind of in the summer, fall to winter time, it just becomes fat with a capital PH, bro. It's fat with a co- uh, a capital Magnus Stallion's ass out here, bro. I'm just going to keep it a stack with you. It is crazy. I mean, I don't really fuck with gaming like that, but like I've seen like a whole, at least anymore, I don't fuck with it anymore. I've seen like a whole list of the games that's had to come out within like the next, within pretty much September, October. And like the list is freaking ridiculous i mean we've had some heavy hitters come out in september but like the list dude is just exemplary to be quite honest with you um anime was a domain i do follow quite a bit more last week that i actually did cover in the previous episode ended up being a little bit more um uh less weighty than i thought it was going to be because these anime studios are overworked like a motherfucker right now and uh, david productions who I guess it's handling both the Naruto and uh, Bleach animation. Uh, they just pretty much have to take a week off. So we'll be getting those two this week. Um, we got Bleach or One Piece, the live action, which I'll be talking about more in depth, hopefully, in this this, uh, this part here. And uh, we also got uh, Jujutsu Kaisen's Return, which was amazing dude the thing about Jujutsu Kaisen that like you never want to listen too much to other people who like read the manga because they're experiencing obviously very a lot uh indifferent differently as compared to us can't even fucking talk right now um us being the anime onlys but dude I really 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 am eating the Kool-Aid right now the Kool-Aid shit sandwich bro because every time I see some crazy shit happen dude I got these motherfuckers coming out the shadows like it gets better it gets better it gets better like how much better can it fucking get dude at a certain point you're gonna go like fucking kevin samuels just fucking till you burst and i mean that's that's a good way to go but i'm like dude you gotta get some of the rest of these fucking shonen bro we can't have be much better than this bro it's too fucking good as it is um that's gonna be one of the topics and some capacity is uh one of the anime i listed there Another one that I'm going to get into in just a second is actually going to be football, which <laughs> I know I keep on picking these like topics that are like audience wise, like kind of opposed to each other. But like, I think it's important to have balance. And I feel like if I'm going to ever do a successful YouTube thing, which I've come and gone with those pretty decent videos, but if I'm going to do this consistently successful, it's going to, have to be a full scope of what the hell I like and I like a lot of things bro that sounds weird as fuck but I like a lot of things dude um I like sports I like anime I like music just, I just I mean just nowadays dude there's such an intersection of culture to where you can afford like all those things I saw a video uh it's doing the rounds on Twitter um where like it was depicting Adult Swim some I guess kind of um like you know a little small cartoon they had and it was like depicting nerds, but this was like an early 2000s cartoon from what it looked like. And like nerds before like the internet were so gated, both by themselves and the outside kind of audience that kind of you know, look at them as nerds or whatever. Um, that's not a thing now. Like nerds are like interspersed throughout all of pretty much every realm of society, um, especially on the internet. So it's like you don't have these individualized, like super, you know, super knowledgeable people about just only a few different lanes of, of things, uh, mainly nerdy things. You have people that are nerdy that also like Drake 
or also fuck with Tom and Paula. You know, they, they don't like it's just like it's not the same thing anymore. Um, it's not the same as it was by Harry Styles. Let's get to the topic. I really just wanted to flesh how much of a herb I was by ending that last segment on a Harry Styles reference. But this is going to be a little less herby in nature. Uh, college football, the uh, greatest sport ever known to man. Uh, it's been shot and killed and tarred and feathered by uh, the uh, TV networks. And unfortunately, I don't think many of those changes are going to be reversible anytime soon. However, we still got a great product at the end of the day. That's how fucking crazy college football is. Like, there's not too many sports that you could just mar with horrible TV deals, um, just general uh, intervention by the higher ups, the money makers, and it still produce a great product. This was as like uninteresting as I think the the marquee was um, on paper. This was one of the best opening weekends I can remember in a fucking while. I mean, from beginning to end, like literally from Thursday to fucking Monday. That's six day. That's five days of <laughs> Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's five days of legitimately like great entertainment. I mean, I'm not as because of my declining attention span and my fascination for spreading myself as thin as possible uh, in terms of entertainment. I'm not as locked into college football as I used to be. But, like, I sat my ass down, bro, in every fucking uh, major game, and I watched that shit, bro. Thursday, Florida, Utah, I think I watched it until it became painfully aware that Graham Mertz is still bad at football, and Florida, unfortunately, just fucking sucks. Um, but then I turned into um, the Nebraska-Minnesota game at, like, the last quarter that that became, you know, the last quarter where that became, um, you know, do or die. Uh, Friday... I think that was the SJSU USC. Am I, no, that's week zero. Am I thinking about am I conflating weeks during week one? I don't know. But Friday was a good game I kind of watched too. Uh, Saturday, you know, Colorado TCU. Some other good games that I can't remember too heavily I watched because the 230 slot was where a lot of the big brands played, but like all those games kind of ended up sucking ass. So I don't really remember what happened after 230 and then kind of just like flamed out. But Sunday, um, what was it? I'm like the Clemson Duke game is in my head right now. Uh, FSU LSU. I thought the first half of that game was fucking fantastic, dude. I mean, I really thought that was some of the most back and forth action we got in the opening day weekend, other than Colorado and TCU, uh, in quite a while. But um, I mean, that was again that was a classic last year. I mean, you know, kind of classic maybe stretching, but like the last quarter or so of that game last year was sensational, and the first half of this one, even though LSU got every fucking 50-50 call, I think literally every single one at first half, um, it was sensational. And, you know, it's just a kind of like roughshod college fuckery that, you know, you want. This is the stuff that people were like, oh my God, I sat there and I watched a quarterback miss a wide open read and blah, blah, blah. Dude, it looks, it feels better because it's all high stakes. The NFL, for me at least, I'm a college guy through and through. I've never been a, much of an NFL guy when Cam Newton came out. You can probably pick my team out based on me mentioning Cam Newton as being the reason why I watched the NFL. But um, I just think that, like, you can tell with most professional sports that, like, this is not all, you know, burn a wire, like, high action shit. Some of this shit just doesn't matter to some of these NFL players. It's simply that fucking simple. Not all of this shit matters. And it, it sucks, but, like, you can't mimic the importance of the 14-game season. Even, I mean, the 12-game playoff hasn't come into play yet. And I do imagine that that will, because the TV networks love killing football, I do think that will hurt the um, end-of-the-year product a little bit. Um, that's obviously examples. Like, Alabama and Georgia pretty much like always ranked somewhere in the top 12 going into that last week and usually come out of the last week as well. Um, I don't know the last time those two were not. Well, Georgia I could probably guess, but Alabama, I don't know the last time they were outside of the top 12 coming out of the um, out of November. But 
again, dude, it, it just, like, it makes, the Sticks is just going to pass on something else. Like, we're just going to have, like, some 13th ranked team that's going to be playing for their life. And, you know, they may not be as big a brand as fucking Ohio State or whatever, but it, it's going to find a way to, to circumvent it. There's, there's always, like, some kind of counterattack that, like, the sport itself seems to have for every, like, horrible intervention that TV networks and, uh, you know, money makers have. Um, even with the college football playoff, like, it's uninteresting as one of the two semifinals always have been in that, um, and I say that knowing the TCU and Georgia games and all of them last year, but for the most part, like, one is always a stinker. The title games have been largely stinkers for a while. I mean, but, like, they still do ratings because it's college football, you know I mean? I don't know. Um, but let me go over some of my topics here. I just thought, I just wanted to start off with saying, like, it's a fucking amazing weekend overall. Um, for Especially for week one. Like, this may not compare to, like, a week 12 or week 14, I guess, because you get a, I think you get two bye weeks. But let's say, like, the week 14 slate. But this is for week one, which is not always great. Pretty good. So, ACC, um, as you can tell, uh, this one was kind of docked uh, or put into the list a long while ago. Stanford Cowan SMU. I think that's just fucking ridiculous. I really do. I think it's one of the more ridiculous things. When it first came into play, it was just asinine to me as in a possibility. that People would even sit there and think to themselves, the money has gotten to this point where we just have to have it. But at, at the same time, like I don't even blame Cal... Maybe, I mean, Stanford and SMU have money from endowments and donors, but, like, it's, it, at this point, college football is an arms race through and through. It doesn't matter if you're on the top level of the Power Five, the Power Four now, I guess, uh, if you're in the middle level or whatever. I mean, you have to keep up with athletics, rising tuition costs, rising blah, blah, blah costs, and things have to be offset to somebody. Like, if, let me tell you, like, tell you this right now. If Stanford had gotten to a point or Stanford was not making the same money they made even from the previous decade. Like let's say they only making ten million or five million from athletics, uh, specifically football. It was not going to be a thing where Stanford was going to just like operate on a cheaper cost level. Like that's some shit that happened during COVID, and it pretty much has not happened again at any other point in the last ten years. Costs have gone up, and fees have gone up, and money that these schools feel they need to make to operate has gone up nobody uh, i won't say nobody but very few schools have reduced capacity or reduced operating budget or any of that shit permanently uh, especially on the level of power five slash power four it just has not happened they just find ways to offset the cost of somebody else or make more money and in the case of you know these pac-12 schools i think the mwc would have been much better from a football perspective definitely been much better from uh, just the living conditions of all the non-football, non-football and basketball sports, because those schools, I mean, they they travel all the time. Whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, they have the, the private jets, or at least the buses. I, I mean, I just think you're like the cost to to revenue that you're getting from each other's sports, dude. It's just not the same, bro. You gotta understand that. Like, it's it's gonna be hell for some of these schools that have to drive. I mean, there's gonna be some schools. I'm not sure how many. There's going to be some schools that have to, like, get a bus for their lacrosse team to go from Rutgers to fucking, I don't know, like, probably not Oregon or Cal. I mean, I don't know if Oregon has, like, planes for their... I know they're trying to figure out ways to include that shit in, like, the new um, deals that they're signing with these these conferences. But, like, realistically, like, the equestrian team... Like, let's say that, for whatever reason, Stanford has an equestrian team... Do you honestly think that, like, they're going to be able to get a plane to go from bumfuck California to Miami, Florida? It's just not going to happen. I mean, it's going to be some real tough emotions, or it's going to be, like, basically having multiple sports all bungee up together in a plane. Um, the, the whole, like, outside the student experience, like, you do have, sometimes you have tutors, you have, um, um, like, team managers even you know like ball boys stuff like that go with these teams to go places but a lot of times those people are also students you're telling me that you have some motherfucker that and I, so most of them probably won't care because they're gonna go to miami or or you know i don't know fucking um palisades or whatever i don't know but just go around the, the world 
uh, for free. But, like, there's going to be some people that are a little bit pissed off that they have to go from fucking Rutgers, New Jersey to damn, uh, where's Eugene, Oregon. I mean, that's not fun. I mean, it's not, like, you know, it's not fucking amazing. I have to do that. And then you probably have to play at some point. I'm sure that hopefully they'll work out. Don't even play too many road games back to back. But you probably have time when you have to do a road game back to back because of the simple fact that you don't have to fly back and forth, back and forth. So you're going from Rutgers, New Jersey, which is a east, I believe in the Eastern time zone, to uh, the Pacific Northwest, which is Oregon. Um, who else is in the Big Ten? Um, I mean, you'll have to drive to Los Angeles, maybe. Um, you go from Los Angeles to fucking Illinois. You know, like it's just it's horrible shit to it. It really is like this. I mean, like, and the thing is, even to this day. I mean, you can kind of say what you want about, like, the under-the-table stuff, but, like, colleges don't pay players still. I'm not I'm not necessarily advocating for them to pay more. I mean, I don't be mad at it, but at the time, they still don't pay players. So these, I mean, they get endowed, or endowments. They get deals with other companies, yeah, but, like, colleges directly do not play players. So you're asking, like, and hell, how much do you think tutors make? Tutors don't make that much fucking money. I'll tell you that. I know some damn tutors... There's reasons why you do the tutoring shit for athletes that aren't necessarily, like, financially uh, privy. Um, but asking the tutor to, like, leave shop entirely for two, three weeks. And maybe the female tutors. I mean, the male tutors may not be that, you know... That, you know, it may not be that, that much of a potential... Uh, it's a weird situation, but... You know, I mean, having these women fly around with these... Fucking athletes across the world and shit. You know, I don't, I don't know. I don't know how that that depicts. You know, I don't know how that looks like. Um, that's the ACC stuff. I'm wholesale against it. It's fucking stupid. Um, I think it's awful. I don't think it's necessarily gonna be good for the sport. I don't think fucking Stanford against against uh, uh, Wake Forest is good for the sport or or fucking Cal against uh, Clemson. I never can say it right. Clemson, Clemson. If you're from the South, dude, which Clemson is from the South. It's, they, they picked a hard-ass name, dude. Like, Auburn, for many Southern people, was not an easy name. Especially when reading it, like, the fucking dyslexia, the Southern dyslexia kicks in. You're like, oh, my God. That sounds, that sounds fucking Auburn. I said it right still somewhat. So People pronounce it Auburn. It's Auburn. Uh, but, you know, I know it too well to even pronounce it badly at this point. Um, so, ACC. Let's go to somewhere else. Um, I already covered the non-glorious sports. Uh, Pac-12. I, I don't really want because I mean this is as soon as we've been over the bush by this point. But the Pac-12, dude, the last year of its existence, you know, pretty much. Like I mean, I don't know. You know, I think there was a, probably a point where it's like the Pac-6 where you probably could just like farmed up a, a lot of Mountain West teams, other like Western teams to kind of make this shit you know keep on going. But we went down to the Pac-2, and um, you know, Washington State and Oregon State are being courted by like the Mountain West Conference. Uh, it's over with. The brand is done. Like somebody might buy the brand itself, and the trademark, and all that stuff, and you know, do something with that. But at this point in time, dude, the Pac-12 is like, if WCW just died instead of like being bought by anybody, it just like died, and the rest was from somewhere else. That's what the Pac-12 pretty much is at this point. It's, it's, it can keep on existing if it wants to exist. It can be a fucking I don't know. You can like license the. I don't know, license the ability to replay USC as Oklahoma in 2004 or whatever. I don't know. Like, just replays or whatever, documentaries. But for all intents and purposes, it's dead. Um, and it's probably the most interesting conference in football this year. I mean, if you really think about it, like, the top three returning quarterbacks, arguably, outside of maybe Drake May and some other guys, um are in that conference. Bo Nitz, Penis, and, uh, I wanted to say that so bad. Uh, Caleb Williams. Um, I'm still a fucking dudes, you know, SEC dick eaters that, like, the quarterback play between that conference and the SEC is as wide as Liz Cambridge's feet, bro. It's fucking huge. I mean, the top ten quarterbacks in the SEC... I mean, how many of those do you think even, like, get time in a Pac-12 score right now, much less start? I can say the first the first top sits of the Pac-12, like, 
all start somewhere at the SEC right now. Uh, Shador Sanders, uh, Cam Ward. This is off the top of my head. Cam Ward, three I mentioned, that's five. Um, I'm trying to think who else. I mean, I don't want to say Dante Moore. He's like a freshman. Um, I mean, DJ Ogalele. I try my best. I try. I really try. DJ started at Clemson. I mean, he looked as good as fucking Clay Klubnick. Um, somebody obvious that I'm missing, but like, I'm just li- I'm really listing these names off, dude. Like, Shadour Sanders is a top 10 highest candidate right now. He's like fifth in the conference. At best, fifth in the conference, at least coming into the season. I mean, that's fucking. Is that not nuts to anybody? Like, the, the top 10? I mean, that literally. The quarterbacking in that fucking conference is all world. The offenses are incredible. Sean Lewis, you know, the remnants of Chip Kelly, uh, you know, he's, he's all right, you know. Um, Lincoln Riley slash, his, oh, he has a pretty good OC. I forgot his OC's name, but uh, he's a pretty good OC. Um, and he even has, oh, uh, Booth Kingsbury as a fucking quarterback coach, even. Um... You know, Washington, Washington State, you know, they had a pretty pretty decent offense. Um, offensive guy a couple years ago, RIP, my man, Mike Leach. Oregon State, good, um, improved offensive play. Um, I'm missing the obvious ones again. Um, Jimmy Lake, you know, Washington. Is Jimmy Lake still there? I think he is. Who's that? I think Jimmy Lake is still uh, Anyway. Um, and then the last one I mentioned. Peanuts, bonus, oh bonus. Um, I forgot who the offensive coordinator is. They hired after um, Gus Junior left. At least really like he's like Gus the fourth, because Gus Junior would be like um, Brent Lashley, and then you have like maybe Chip Lindsley, Lindsay, and then you probably have uh, the Arizona State head coach now. He has um, Jaden Rashada. You know, um, I, I forgot to say I'm be honest with you, but like he coached at my school. I mean, I know of a guy. You know. Uh, so you have all these excellent, excellent motherfuckers, dude. Excellent. This is the best the conference has looked in years. And you're going to tell me that conference is going to disappear? Just gone? Just out of here? They're going to go everywhere else to other rivalries that won't matter? Like, oh, my God, we got USC against Ohio State. Like, that's not a rivalry, bro. They've had some good games. It's not a fucking rivalry, bro. There's no juice. There may be juice in 100 years from now. But there's no juice right now in that fucking rivalry. And probably that conference won't exist in 10 years or 100 years. It'll probably be some mega conference, you know? If college football still exists, um, rivalries do they matter, man. They, they really do matter, dude. Like being able to anticipate Colorado and USC, you could have Shadur Sanders. Well, Caleb's gone off this year, but you could have Shadur Sanders against Dante Moore. For the next two years, you know? I think Sanders is... I think Sanders is draft eligible, too. Shit, dude, they have... They have the most experienced fucking crop of quarterbacks in the entire Power Five, and those quarterbacks are going to be leaving along with their school's admission to the fucking Pac-12. It's just maddening stuff. It really is. It's so sad, and, um... It's going to be very sobering doing basketball and having Bill Walton... Um, at least not cover I me. Mean, what like it's even a real like merit in having Bill Walton not cover those weird Pac-12 after dark basketball games. Fucking Dave Pash trying to hold him back. Like it's just gonna be depressing, you know. Like it's not gonna be worthwhile. I think. Um, and not to say anything, you know. I mean, of losing the actual Pac-12 basketball teams. Like I mean, I think they always have some extra juice because like nobody really gets to watch them too often. So, like, you kind of, like, look in Arizona, like, oh, my God, Christian Coloco and fucking Benedict Mather. And it's like, I've never seen these guys play before, but, like, I've heard their name for the last, you know, three, four, five months. And really, you can't wait to see them because you, like, you never get to see the fucking 11 a.m. or 11 p.m. games, you know. Um, that's the Pac-12. I don't want to go into it too much because, I mean, everybody's being, a, you know, being in a death, but fuck me. Uh, there, here's one big moment I wanted to, to kind of highlight. Tulane, in parentheses, NOLA, doing a Mardi Gras turnover chain against South Alabama. Uh, parentheses, Mobile. I don't want to da- dox myself, but, um, you know, I'm pretty familiar with both North, Al- or North Alabama, um, New Orleans, and Mobile. Um, if you are from the, that general area, those are like three hours away, maybe. Maybe three hours from each other. Um, very, both very much love uh, Mardi Gras. I know people from both camps, they fucking go to bat over that Mardi Gras shit. 
people who are from those nearby areas that don't even live in the actual cities go to bat over that Mardi Gras shit. It matters more than I care about it, honestly, but it matters. And then when I saw after the game that uh, South Alabama had on the back of their helmets, this is the real Mardi Gras or whatever, and then, you know, turnover chain from Tulane. I mean, that shit had real juice, dude. That group of five shit has juice. And I wish the group of five wasn't being rated the way it is because, I mean, Tulane's still group of five right now. South Alabama's still group of five right now. But those schools may not be group of five pretty soon here. I mean, it just gets to the point where, like, to subsist, the conferences need to eat each other. If they eat each other, they eat the ones below them and pretty much even eat the ones below them, especially in the way of the, the Big 12. Um, but, dude, it's, it could get to a point in the group of five, which the group of five has been as on as of late the last few years as they've been ever. I mean, UCF went to Natty. Um, you know, Boise State, you know, fell off under the, you know, kind of tail end of uh, fucking potato boy. But, like, Houston, Tulane... Um, South Alabama, Troy. I mean, we've had some real, real winners. And I know someone's going to get pissed at this mention their school. I I can't think of any schools off my head, man. But we've had some real winners out there that, um, that I hope get to stay on that level because that level deserves a matter too. And I know that they can go down, they can reach down and pick up the Jacksonville states of the world and all that. But, like, you know, I, I just kind of like the way things are, you know what I mean? Clutch football is one of those rare sports that, like, did not get appreciably worse when time has progressed, like, I, I would contend the sport itself, the actual on-field product, was as good in 2013 as it was in probably 1993. Like, the personalities, the watchability of the sport, to the highest level, the bowl games and titles. I would say it got worse when things started kind of getting intervened and you had different playoff formats or different postseason formats that led to the playoffs. Um... I don't think the money affected anything. I really don't think money had anything to do with it. If anything, NIL is allowed. People like Bo Nitz, uh, Penis, um, other people like that to come back. That probably would have not came back otherwise. So I don't think money has hurt the sport at all. Um, but it's just the the fucking money grubbing. I think it's really hurt the shit. And I think the 12-team format is a band-aid on what was not a very well-thought-out uh, initial structure. But damage is done, dude. I mean, you had multiple... Most of the playoffs are just completely fucking useless. It's just might as well not, might as well not even happen. Uh, I mean, it's always nice to get a, you know, somebody like LSU a win, but like LSU beat the dog shot of Clemson out for much for two and a half, two quarters, and then beat the shot of Oklahoma. I mean, I don't think that's fun to watch. Clemson just escaped Ohio State that same year. That was a good ass game, but like, it's just, you know, two out of three games sucking every year. It's not exactly good for the sport, you know? And unfortunately, damage is done by that point. I mean, you can't go back and and uh, heal the last nine years of bad products, you know. It's, I don't think every year has been bad. Like I said, last year, even with 90, was horrible. I mean, two semifinal games that were actually watchable. Brand fucking new concept. Completely novel, honestly. Um, that's that's where I got from Tulane, South Alabama. If you ever can go to Tulane or South Alabama, uh, Tulane, or no, North, North, uh, I see NL, I think North. NOLA, Cafe Du Monde, Mobile, um, Mobe Beignet. So my last point was LSU kicking must be fucking horrible. I'm not going to go into this too much, but LSU kicking must be fucking terrible, right? Like, I don't know what the fuck Brian Kelly was doing. I don't know what Brian Kelly was, like, getting paid by um, the league to keep their game interesting when they shouldn't have beaten the shuttle Florida State. But, um, I mean, even if you just, like, look at it, like, they had the, um, Got to the, the six plays in the first drive in the red zone and then went forward and didn't get it. Um, they had another one where they went forward and didn't get it. I think they muffed a punt and then they stood a chance to, to go up, I want to say 13 7. Either I think when it, I want to say late first half or early second half. I'm, I'm forgetting the score right now. And then they fucked it. And then I think it pretty much went to half tie or something like that. I think it was like 13, 14, something like that. But basically, Florida State, like, was only surviving because LSU let them survive, more or less. Like, even the field goals, I think you... It goes, really, when you, like, really beat somebody down early field goals, and you're the hottest team, like, clearly, it goes one of two ways. It can go 2014 Alabama against Auburn, where, like, Auburn just kept on fucking Alabama, but kept on selling for field goals. 
and eventually Alabama just like figured it out and Auburn just couldn't keep up with field goals anymore. Uh, <laughs> but um, they can either go that way or you just kind of hit the field goals early and just like rip them apart once you kind of free, like just kind of gimmick and game plan some uh, red zone plays. This went more into the, um, this went neither actually, it went neither direction because they didn't get the field goals and they got the one, they got fucked. <laughs> It didn't go either way. But uh, Brian Kelly, just some real dreadful coaching in that game, honestly. Just thoroughly, thoroughly outcoached. If you hear my neighbors, by the way, I f- the ones up top, because it sounds going to come from up top. I don't know how they come to you guys. I fucking hate them. There's nothing I can do about them. I live in a shitty apartment where like, there's fucking neighbors on every fucking wall. And unfortunately, the ones up top are fucking horrible people. Um, let's go on to the next topic. We're going to go into One Piece. Okay. Um, I'm trying to keep this. I'm not going to go into a thorough, in depth review of One Piece's live action. I'm not going to do that because I don't know how to approach that. I'm just going to come from it from a guy. I just. Here's my back, background. As a kid, like a lot of us kids, I sat there and I watched four kids. I watched Cartoon Network. I watched whatever anime. The television shows would feed us to watch. And in that, I really enjoyed Naruto. I enjoyed Bleach. I enjoyed Dragon Ball. Digimon. Beyblade. And I would say I even enjoyed One Piece. I liked the theme that they had on 4Kids. Uh, it's pretty much, I think, their opening theme... Although I say opening theme, they probably had multiple themes. I just am not remembering. But I know it starts out with Gold Rogers giving us a little speech. And then I pretty much... I, the only thing I can really remember from One Piece, it had uh, the first three, Usopp, Sanji, and I think it got to Chopper. And I don't think I any further than that. But I watched, I want to say, up until Arlong is introduced... Because I always like remember this shark, the blue shark guy. Like, I always remember him. That's how I always remembered him for the longest before. I, I try kind of like looking back into it a little bit more. Um, I remember Buggy. I remember... Uh, I always call him like Captain Hook, but like fucking Koro. I remember his design at least. I didn't really remember Alvia or Al- 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 Alvita. I didn't really remember her too, too much. But um, I don't remember like the plot because it was like when I was a kid, right? But like... One Piece wasn't... I even had a One Piece video game. Like, I wasn't mad at One Piece. But the problem is, like, One Piece at that point was actually, like, somewhere around... Because I'm, like, I'm 24. Like, this is a while ago. One Piece actually was somewhere around the Arlong arc. It probably wasn't that much for you then. I mean, because if you're, um, you know, kind of dubbing and bringing them to the States, probably an arc or two behind. The problem is that, like, One Piece... If you ask One Piece fans, it doesn't have filler. It just has, like... Some sh- some stuff that like matters less to the grand scheme of the series, but like things get brought back from even filler esque arcs, so they don't really have filler in a traditional sense. Um, Naruto and Bleach had a lot of filler, and Naruto and Bleach ended at a point. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, like One Piece wasn't just really that successful, um, and now like, when it came to um, it starts with a T the. The tsunami. Um, One Piece didn't really get played like that at a certain point in Toonami. Like, Bleach, Naruto, Dragon Ball did. And some other anime did. And One Piece was there. I'm not going to say it never was there in Toonami, but like, it just didn't get the same like underline that I think some other anime did in the Western audience. At least the United States. Um, so I had to stop keeping up with One Piece, basically. I just kind of drifted away from it. And it kept on going, and it kept on going, and it's probably almost 20 years from when I was watching this on 4Kids, and it's still going, and I'm now probably 800 episodes behind, 900 episodes behind. I can't fucking do that. <laughs> I can't fuck. I can't. I've tried. I've thought about it, but it's so daunting. It doesn't matter which way you like, consume it, to me. The manga is fucking horrible to read. The panels are fucking terrible. It, it's drawn like a fucking like five year old draws it. I'm not insulting Oda, who's damn amazing visionary with the writing, but like fucking hell, I can't. It's not visually appealing to read those fucking manga chapters. And the anime, it's a thousand fucking episodes. That's at thirty minutes a pop. I, I'm sure there's something that'd be longer than thirty minutes. 
I mean, most of them are under 30 minutes because it's like, this counting ads is like 24 minutes. But like, the point being, that's like fucking, I can't even do that math on top of my head, dude. That's, <laughs> dude, if, you do, if, if I did round it to, to, to 30, that'd be 500 hours of fucking episodes. Even if you like knocked off a, a few minutes here and there, dude, it's still 400 plus maybe, you know? I mean, that's fucking horrible. <laughs> Do I've binged a lot of shit. I've binged Secession a few days. I've binged um, the first six seasons of, uh, or first seven seasons of Game of Thrones in like a week. I watched uh, All of Breaking Bad in like a week or two. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm not new to this, I'm true to this, but like that's not fucking realistic, bro. I, if you're like working, if you're, uh, if you have like friends, a family, I mean, how much time do you, like, if you're, if you're not going to be doing the binge model, it's going to take you fucking forever to catch up to that shit. And it's still going. Like, fucking train doesn't stop, dude. It's the Infinity Train arc. My Demon Slayer. Fuck Demon Slayer. But, like, I just, I, I can't do it. But this wasn't a One Piece, like, riffing insult episode. It's a One Piece compliment episode. Because the live action, dude, you know how fucking on brand it is after tons of bad live actions? And not all of them are, lot, are bad, but a lot of the big ones are bad. And the fucking one that has like a really notably good one is fucking One Piece. You know how on brand that shit is? That damn out of all fucking people have a good fucking live action. It is maddening. One Piece fans do. I mean, like, you just wanted to be taken down a pig. Like, that's the reason why we're all on Twitter shitting on Gear 5. Because there's they have the fucking biggest head out of any fans of any entertainment medium alive God skipped to earth is what they believe that show is and when Gear 5 like I don't want to say it flopped it just wasn't ever comparable to fucking Super Saiyan which of course <laughs> I don't the problem is that a lot of One Piece fans don't realize like how small that show is in the western market like, it's a notable anime don't get me wrong I mean it's probably the top 5 but it's not Dragon Ball in the fucking 90s. It's not fucking Dragon Ball in the 2000s. It's not Naruto in the 2000s. It's just not that. And it never will be that. I mean, it's it's too late in the, the process for it to be that. To be that level of success, you need to like, kill it in all walks of life that succeed for franchises in the U.S. The games have to hit. The march has to hit. You have to have, like... Western like moments that appeal that like screaming and shit to transform, you know, screaming to fight Sasuke. Like, fucking, there's just no Western benefits that One Piece has other than being like fucking funny or whatever, or being bloated. Being bloated is something we fucking Western understand, but uh, unfortunately, our attention span counteracts the bloatedness. Um, it's kind of like a trade off. Our attention span is too low to fucking go through a thousand episodes of it's just the chance it's bad right like i've never like got into a form of entertainment where like i thought what if this sucks halfway in i really never have but i saw that opinion on twitter earlier today about one piece and it really made me think like what if that shit ends up sucking like i like bleach to such a point where like the tybw arc being bad or at least poorly written didn't really matter to me because of how much I like the characters, but like, I'm tentative about One Piece. Like, I'm already tentative about it. Like, if I go into it with a bad attitude and I'm sitting there thinking every time, oh my god, what if the fucking Marine for Arc is fucking terrible? It's like the gods could perfect, like everybody tells me it is. What if Gear 5 is actually the build up to that isn't actually worthwhile? I get to Gear 5 and then it just ends up being fucking, you know, kind of a, a wet fart. I just, you know, you really think about it when you spend like 500 hours watching that fucking TV show, you know, you really kind of, kind of circles back to your brain a little bit. Um, I've, I've, I spent this block that's supposed to be about complimenting the one action or the one piece live action shitting on the anime it really is fun right like I think it's a theme that more than anything it needed to hit it needed to be campy and it needed to be fun because it was not going to go to recreate some of the more outrageous parts of the series but that part of the series is not that outrageous so that's what works for it a lot of people want to see sequels because of how good this was, the season was. But the problem is that, like, this gets unrealistic very quickly. And um, 
maybe we'll do one season, one more season. But when you get to like the fucking titties growing every the chapter, uh, fucking massive chopper, um, I'm just talking about shit I know about. I don't even know about like fucking the massive dragon fighting fucking Gear Five Luffy. The fuck are they gonna do with that? Or like the the one version I don't know what gear it is. And I don't fucking know, but whatever gear Luffy it is, where he's fucking just a beef ass dude, like fucking you know, dark red arms and shit, like a fucking bouncer. What the hell are they gonna do with that? <laughs> they can show his rubber stuff in moments because it works more as like a kind of a change up or like a trick. That shit does not work if it's not animating like constant flying around throwing rubber everything you know rubber stomach um rubber ass arms and legs 24 7 as you can tell when you watch it man the actual rubber like moves he uses are very few and far between and even for like the guys who have other devil fruit powers it's not as common as you know you may see in the anime for obvious reasons but it's because like simply put either the cgi the shot of it's gonna look like a fucking joke or you just can't depict it right, you know, not doing CGI, you know? So, I mean, well, I say not doing CGI. You have to do CGI to some degree to show a flying hand with a sword on it or a knife on it coming to somebody. You got to do CGI, but you get my point. Either way, you're not going to give it do it justice. So, I mean, I, I think this is going to be like the only season they get that's going to be like as grounded as this one feels because it gets wild and quirky very quickly. But I think I'll do another season because of how... I mean, this is really, like, well-received. Like, I mean, people... A lot of people like me that came to it with zero expectations and just blown the fuck away. I mean, it's funny. It can stand its own. It's like... I mean, it is, from what I remember, fairly based off of the anime. Like, not completely. Uh, there's less people, obviously, you know, having to pay them and shit like that. Um, it's a little bit smaller, obviously, in scope as well. But, like, it... It's, it's based off of it quite a bit. Like, it's founded, but it's, it derives to make it work, to make the, the story work and make it believable as a TV show, which is not easy. I mean, to even, like, adapt something from manga to anime. I mean, there's tons of great anime that gets just panned by dweebs because it doesn't faithfully adapt scene by scene, the manga. Um, so to take that, you pretty much multiply it by 100 to adapt from potentially manga to TV show or anime to TV show. That's tough, dude. That's that's very, very tough. And uh, Dave succeeded, I thought. I mean, very good casting. I like uh, I like really everybody. Uh, I'd say Luffy, he was probably a little bit hard to get done right than I thought he'd be. Um, but, like, the always smiling shit, even when the dude is sad, he's still smiling to some degree. It's very, like, rare when he's just not smiling at all. Like, even just saying some shit he does not want to say, he's still smiling, you know. He's sad and smiling because Luffy, you know. He's supposed to be, like, pretty much the lifter-upper for everybody else, you know. Um, I like Zoro, you know, kind of like, this Zoro is like a little bit more like I think, um, I can't say he's edgier than, than the anime Zoro, but he's like more of a hard ass, if that makes sense, which, uh, that's his character in the anime too, I get it, but like, it's, it's just a different way, you know, it feels more grounded in reality. Um, I thought Nami was good, you know, a little bit more, uh, you know, emotionally fleshed out early than I kind of expected Nami to be, but I liked her. Um, Usopp just looked like a capping motherfucker from the very beginning. The first time you see Usopp, like, this dude is full of fucking cap. And he just holds on to that shit dearly. But he does a good job of playing off as, like, just, like, a natural part of his personality. Like, that's what makes Usopp work, is that Usopp can, like, lie to such a degree that he doesn't even know he's lying. It just feels like another, like, another fucking just line from him, you know? It's not even necessarily, like, it's, you just laugh at it or whatever. Or somebody you just ignore. Like, it's just like, this is just somebody talking to talk, you know? But, like, it's it's effortless. And that's what kind of it feels like with the Usopp character. And so forth and so forth, you know? I thought they did as good as possible with Arlong's design. He's not going to be seven feet tall and just a hulking giant. It's just not realistic. Um, Alvita, you know, feel like she kind of made sense in, the, in a certain sense. Um, I, Boof, uh, Boofy. Buggy. I like Buggy a lot, honestly. Like, He's, like, kind of a more of a Joker-esque type spin on that character. But, like, I like it, you know. I, I thought it was cool. Um, and so forth and so forth. You know, I'm not going to go into this too much, but more. But I thought I really liked it. And I recommend it to anybody. And speaking of recommendations, recommending time. 
Okay, so I gotta close out here. Um, I try to keep it under 50 minutes. Hopefully we get under it. Um, just a quick couple of recommendations. Um, I got Baby Goyard. Album's name is Fourth Wall Part 2. I believe the exclusive producer on this, I think, is uh, DJ Smokey, who is um, one of the more fun producers I've come across recently. Uh, his tags, I'm sure you've heard him before. Uh, I just should have nuke up my pussy. Uh, and he also has a bunch of... Um, let me say it again just so you can make sure. I just shoved a nuke up my pussy. It's one of his tags. Uh, <laughs> he also has some other nuke-related ones. It's literally like somebody's just a nuke. Uh, he uses the uh, SGP, Space Coast Perp Scream, as a, kind of an ad-lib. And um, he has like a series of ad-libs that are said by, I believe, the same guy that does the uh, Damn Son, Where'd You Find This uh, tag. So, um, very fun stuff. It's very repetitive, very quickly. He listen to his own stuff because some of his own albums will repeat those tags every five seconds, every song, and multiple, you know, 10, 15 song albums. Um, but on this tape, you know, I thought he did a pretty good job. And Baby Goyard is pretty fun on that, pretty flashy. I think I already did this one, but uh, Japanese House Touching Yourself, that's the name of the song. Um, the name of the album is In the End It Always Does. Uh, I just love that song so fucking much, too. I haven't played as much. This week as I played like the weeks past, but I really love that song, dude. Uh, one of my favorite songs of the year and a really good album. Um, just something else that's different than that. Uh, the Ramones, Rocket to Russia. I listened to this yesterday for the first time because uh, a song that I really like. It's uh, Thinks Catherine Obvious by Kitty, formerly Kitty Bride. Um, it just mentions, you know, she like name drops, uh, you know, Sheena, punk rocker. I always thought it was a character from like a fucking TV show, like a 90s TV show. Is that a show or a song? Uh, a punk rock song? Which she does like. The, the girl, her, her, her lyric is like, um, you know, I feel like I was Sheena, you know, a punk rocker. And I was like, okay, well, I thought it was like a punk rock character. It's a punk rock song. Uh, so I listened to it, the whole album, uh, Rocket of Russia. Very good album. I gave, I think, four, four out of five or 4.5 out of five stars. Um, I like punk rock. You know, I, I think I might lean more pop punk, but like I hear some pop punk like MGK and uh, some some shit. I'm like, okay, this is fucking terrible. Um, I've listened to the entire like playlist has like 300 plus songs for pop punk shit. I gave it a try. It's not my cup of tea, but I'm somewhere between like punk rock and pop punk. So this is cool. Kind of scratched the itch. I enjoyed it. Um, I recommend that. Uh, One Piece, I recommended that as well. And close out with, as I should always, Jessica Kaisen. JJK is in weird fucking form. I, you gotta go watch that shit now. College football, I recommend go watching that as well. If you watch any game, and you just don't, like, you're not a big football fan, just, like, this, I think even the spectacle of Colorado and TCU, I think that fucking bleeds into the TV. I really think it does. Like, if you just listen with the commentators on, listen to Gus Edwards, who I think Gus Edwards was on that, on that, um, that game, I believe. I think so. Um, just, like, watch that game and maybe just follow Colorado for the rest of the season. I think if it's going to be a casual, like not even real sports fan team of the year, probably going to be Colorado. So this is more from like the nerdy guys that may still be listening to this right now. Go watch Colorado play TCU and go watch them play the rest of the season. All right. I'm going to get this under 50 minutes. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, I don't know if it felt rushed. I feel like after 48 minutes, you can't really be rushed, but it is what it is. I got this shit finished. I'm going to go take a fucking nap or go to sleep. I don't know. Peace.